Hi everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of Iowa City's Virtual Monarch Festival 2020. Bryce Marin again here at the Eastside Recycling Center. It's been about two weeks since we first gathered our eggs outside here. We've been raising our caterpillars and now we're ready to move to the chrysalis phase, which is one of my personal favorites here. You see right here we have one of our chrysalises in this small enclosure here. One of the things that you have to consider as you move to this phase is you're going to have to have an enclosure that's going to be big enough for the adult butterfly once it emerges to uh, pump fluid into its wings. This container is a little too small, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out a way to move this chrysalis into a larger enclosure. Uh, we're going to discuss some ways to accomplish that today. You may be asking yourself, why do we even bother moving chrysalis from a small enclosure to a big one in the first place? Well, for one reason is that when the caterpillar leaves its silk onto a surface, sometimes that silk isn't able to adhere to a synthetic surface, such as the mesh of uh, outdoor enclosures that we keep, or for instance, on a plastic cup on the lid, sometimes that silk doesn't really have a chance to adhere to it and it starts to fall off the, the weight of the chrysalis makes it pull away and fall off. The other reason that we have to move these chrysalises is we put them in enclosures that are a little too small for them to emerge and pump fluid into their wings. You might be asking yourself, well then why not just put it in a large enclosure? We raise quite a few of them, um, 50 or 60 in a typical year. If we were to raise all of our caterpillars into one large enclosure, uh, there's a chance of having a, some sort of a disease or a parasite wipe out, infect one caterpillar and wipe out every caterpillar that's in that enclosure. That's always something you have to worry about. My favorite trick for getting around the two problems caused by the uh, synthetics of the materials uh, and moving from a small enclosure is to put a leaf as the caterpillar is coming of age and it gets to the point where it's about to go into its chrysalis phase. I often take a, a leaf, it doesn't have to be a milkweed, but that's what we have a lot of out here, so I use those. And I will put it across the top of the jar, the enclosure, and just leave it up there. That way when the caterpillar goes into its chrysalis, then you can see all I have to do is move the leaf, basically. And I'll show you how to do that next. What I have in my hands here is a pair of alligator clips that are tied together with a short piece of twine. These are used for the technique I'm gonna show you. Uh, my friend Susie was the one who introduced this to me. Uh, it's been invaluable in helping out with our activities out here with the Monarch Festival. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the lid off. We have the chrysalis on the bottom of this leaf here. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors. Just cut a little bit around the leaf, not too close. Uh, there's quite the silk from the caterpillar when it's spun the silk onto this it spreads out for quite a ways so we cut off some of the excess leaf and I kind of fold it up a little bit take our alligator clip and get it on there and we're all set and so the chrysalis is nice and secure to the leaf uh, this particular one's been in the chrysalis for a few days and I'm just going to bring it over to the other enclosure here, clip it to the little twine that I have on the top, set it right back down. Piece of cake. A few things you want to consider before you get your chrysalis situated is to have uh, an area where it has plenty of space around it, uh, about four inches in every direction is, is good. Uh, so that when that butterfly emerges out of the chrysalis, it has enough room to pump fluid into its wings. Uh, that's essential for it to be able to, to emerge and be successful as an adult. A second thing that you want to consider is there are instances where the monarch might fall off of its little chrysalis husk and fall below it. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of substrate or a towel or something that's relatively soft below it so that doesn't damage itself when it does so. And if it does so, it's gonna to wanna to try to crawl back up to get itself upside down to get its wings going again. So that's why we have some sticks in here they'll be able to crawl onto if need be, crawl back up. 
get back upside down and continue their process. What we have here is a guy that decided that it wasn't gonna put itself on top of the top leaf and instead went to the side and got under the lid and is attached to it. This enclosure, as I said before, is a little too small. It's not, it doesn't have enough room to give this a chance to expand its wings when it decides to emerge. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a toothpick, give it a little moisture here. Let me do this. And you have to try to scrape the silk off from around the chrysalis. And when I, you start out, you have to go quite far away and just try to gently coax it off. And it might take a little time. There's no reason to rush. Once it starts coming, it'll work out pretty well. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and it's, I'm starting to wind up the silk around the end of the toothpick, and there you have it. You'll notice that I keep a towel under here in case I have a, a little bit of a mishap and drop this. It's okay as long as it's been at least a day since it went into the chrysalis. You can gent be gently touching it with your fingers a little bit as long as you've had your hands washed. And get the toothpick off of that silk. And I'm gonna get these clips right up to the clemaster is what they call it. So it's firmly on the silk. And there you go, you're in business. This technique also works really well uh, if you happen to come and find that the chrysalis at some point had fallen onto the ground. If you get it quick enough, wrap up the silk a little bit with a wet toothpick, take some of these clips or something akin to that, clip it up, put it back up, and I've had that happen and uh, still have the monarch survive. We're back outside here with our large enclosure that we had our two caterpillars in from last week, just to give you a little update on those two guys. And this morning when I came into work, up in the corner, one was in its J formation. That's when it holds itself in an upside down, it looks like a J on the underside of a leaf or on top of the enclosure. That's what they typically do right before they go into their chrysalis. And I'm looking up there right now and the caterpillar is gone and there's a chrysalis there. So it's gonna be in there for another 10 to 15 days. We're just gonna keep it in the cage here. Just wait for them, keep an eye on it and let it go when it's ready to go. Uh, the second caterpillar ended up putting itself on the underside of a leaf down here. Looks like there's plenty of room underneath it for it to emerge. And so we're just gonna keep them there and keep an eye on it. And they should be all set. So if you've made it to this point and you got your chrysalis secured in a large enough enclosure, your work is done. So you can go ahead and relax and wait until your chrysalis emerges, unless you wanna just start all over again if you're having fun with it and start collecting some more eggs and raising more caterpillars and starting the process all over again. Next week, we're gonna focus on adult monarchs. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week.